the Battle of Las Vegas comes here, the winner of the West region. They put away Iowa after trailing by as many as 19 points for Indiana. They came out of the Midwest region. And they beat an LSU team by one point in that regional championship, 77 to 76. Billy, how about the keys in this game? What should the fans look for early? Well, I think uh, Indiana's going to try to go inside, use their power game. It'll be interesting to watch how Vegas tries to go ahead and guard Steve Alford. And also to see how Gillen does inside with his power moves because you know Jerry Tarkini can go to that big guy inside that makes the outside even more effective. And let's see if Vegas can shoot the three-pointer where Providence couldn't. Indiana will wear the white. Vegas will wear the traveling red. Indiana controls Keith Smart from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He's come close to home to play in a Final Four. And what a story he is. All these stories will unfold in this game. Rick Calloway, 20. Puts it on the floor. Gerald Patio out on him for the running Rebels. Today play that man-to-man. -man. Banks is on Alford. He didn't pull the trigger early on. They get it in now to Garrett. Garrett on the turnaround over Gilliam with the game's first field goal. Now the Rebels have come right back down. Mark Wade, one of the best point guards in the land, will key this attack. He seldom shoots. Gilliam is in low turnaround foul. Dick Paparo is the official who called it. Our referee today is John Clockerty out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Paparo is from Syracuse, and Rusty Herring from Durham, North Carolina. That foul was charged to 24, Daryl Thomas. Well, Indiana has had a giant advantage in the foul situation and throughout this tournament, so they happen to pick up the first one there. Also interesting, watch how Wade is guarded by Indiana. Thomas taking Gilliam in this set. Garrett is over on Bass Knight, and now he's able to slough off. See, Brent, Alford is not guarding Wade. There's two schools of thought there. Oh, great jumper. By Gilliam, the big man inside. First school is to guard the passer tight so he can't have the passing lane. The second is to lay off. Indiana decides to lay off. Thomas got the man, and Garrett lost it. Dean Garrett couldn't get a handle on it. Game's first turnover, and the running Rebels come back. We're tied at two. You don't have to worry about a shot clock when Vegas is playing. He traveled. It'll go over to Indiana. That's a turnover. And Bobby Knight barking something out at the end of the bench. Patio, a one-dimensional player. Jerry Tarkanian said he doesn't dribble it well, doesn't pass it well, but he can shoot it. Both Knight and Tarkanian are up here early. And Smart was coming inside of Wade and drew the first foul on Vegas. Wade normally can outrun anybody with the ball, but Smart's one of the best athletes in college basketball. Billy, can you believe that we've got six junior college graduates out here starting? Now, with Vegas, we know, but what in the world is going on? Well, if Bobby Knight hadn't had the two junior college players, he would not be in the Final Four, I can assure you. One of them lost it there, and here comes Wade. Gets it off a beautiful pass, and Bass Knight comes through for the field goal. Banks is going with Alford. The Indiana coaches wondered who would come with him first, and Banks is trailing Alford through that screen-setting offense. Alford pulls it up, and it's going to go against Thomas. That's two fouls on Thomas, down away from the ball. Dick Paparo, a tough official, comes in here and whistles two quick ones. Notice how Bob Knight kept his cool there. Now that's an off. Two fouls away from the ball been called right there. Thomas... Away from the ball completely, can't believe it. He's trying to set the screens inside. Kelly on the turnaround. He's two for two from that spot and two field goals. And Vegas breaks to a 6-2 lead. But if you're not going to play the pass...
You don't find Indiana's situation where they don't block out often. Into Smart again in low, and he draws the foul from Bass Knight. Let's take a look at Bass Knight on the dunk at the offensive end. Shot goes up. Patio really didn't have it in his hands, but put it up anyway. Now watch. Everybody in Indiana turns their head. They don't put a body on anybody. Garrett figures he can out-leap Bass Knight, but that's not the case. You've got to put a body on the great quick leapers from UNLV. That's smart. Huge, huh? Yes, indeed. And you know, we've got a McDonald's All-American out there in Freddie Banks. Well, here's a young man who was flipping McDonald's in Baton Rouge <laughs> for a year. He was cooking the burgers down there as Keith Smart. UNLV, four of five from the field. Indiana, three of three. So this game starts out dramatically different than the first one. Wade is left alone, and he takes a three off the iron. Thomas controlling. There's Smart and a beautiful defensive move by Wade. That was going to be a breakaway, but he knocked the ball out of bounds. Well, we've got the largest crowd ever for a college basketball game watching the Final Four here in the Dome. 64,959. And folks, not everybody has a perfect seat here, I might point out. We're going to show you a couple of them. Thomas puts it down, comes to the glass, score the field goal, and Thomas is third personal foul. Offensive foul, field goal, and Steve Isle becomes the man of the moment for Indiana. Well, that's a tough break for Indiana because they are not a very deep bench. We have Bob, Tom Bob Knight acting like the gentleman over there. Excellent defense inside. Patio just holds his ground, goes chest to chest. It's kind of a touch foul. I think a no call was the best call in that play. He was being a gentleman, but he was saying to the power, you're the one that got him in trouble with that second foul. You say it nicely. Where they're just leaving Wade wide open. He's got to put up a couple of shots. Nice dish. Gilliam has been perfect. This is with the left hand. Loose. Offered in a foot race. Rebels get it. Wade to Patio. He jacks the three. You know, Indiana has been a slow starter in this tournament. Remember we saw him against Auburn. Way behind. Slow against LSU. And they're starting a little bit slow here today. Here's Steve Isle, who came off the bench, number 32. Good all-purpose sub. A little bit slow of foot here to be ah. in this Vegas. We'll see how he compensates. And underneath, it's going to come back the other way. Well, they're giving Callaway a push. You bet. Underneath. So it'll go on over. And now, Knight gives Paparo still another blast as he walks by. That's four team fouls on Indiana and two on Vegas. And the Shark is not saying a thing. He puts his hand over his mouth. He doesn't want to say anything the way it's going. There's a three from Banks. They're two and three with the threes. And Bass Knight knocks the ball out of bounds. And you've got to be impressed with the quickness that Vegas has shown Indiana early in this game. Brent, they're not only quick, they've got size with quickness. And that's really hard to handle. And he was fouled. That's two on Wade. Look for Jerry Tarkanian to come back with Graham, which doesn't really hurt him too much in his ball game. Might even help him a little because Graham then could go over on Alford and free up Banks not to have to work so hard on defense. So he doesn't want to play a smaller man on Alford. Here comes Graham into the ball game. Graham is a 6'4 senior. He played for Bob Wade, Dunbar High School back in Baltimore before Wade moved to the Maryland job. And Wade will sit down, but they will miss that leadership out on the floor. And Alford right away has drawn Graham just as you figured he would. Be. Boy, people who think Vegas can't play some defense are crazy. They play as tough a man-to-man -man as you'll see in college ball. It's a very aggressive defense. Isle gets to the glass. Wasn't sealed off. Taps it in. It's 14-11. UNLV over Indiana. Graham's three-pointer. And Isle rebounds. Graham didn't even get a sweat up here. He's putting up threes. Alford maneuvering. Nice defense. Back Graham. from Isle. Inside to Garrett. Here comes Smart sliding through. He crashes down and he's fouled. It'll go against Vegas. 
Well, if you're Jerry Tarkanian, you don't want to see somebody try to draw a charge and a guy that's shooting an off-balance layup. Might as well let it shoot. Billy, one of the most important parts of this game was probably the meeting of the three officials and looking at this. We've had eight team fouls called in this game already. We've got Thomas out of the Indiana lineup in three, four against UNLV, four in Indiana. Now, they have established right off the top that this is going to be a tightly officiated game. And if they maintain it, the athletes on the floor can say, all right, we know the rules and we'll play by them. It's if consistency is lacked in the second half that you begin to have trouble with coaches. I think these referees saw the game between LSU and Indiana. And they're not going to let this one get out of hand at all. Banks bringing it down. One of the rare times you see this team slow it up. And not for long. Smart with him. Callaway out on patio. Here's Bass Knight coming around aisle. Went to the left hand, but you could see the quickness in there. Garrett cleans up rebounding. Now Indiana can tie it. Oh, good help by Bass Knight. Offered quickly with his initial shot. After way by Bass Knight. Here come the Rebels. Patio has it knocked away beautifully by Callaway. You know, that's a defensive move a lot of guys are getting to be very good at. Stripping the man of the ball as he goes up for the jump shot instead of going for the block. Alford on the drive. Oh! Tosses it up and ties the game at 14. Steve Alford's first field goal here. And it's turned over. Banks lost it on the dribble. On the turnover, and it'll go back to the Hoosiers. We got a television timeout here in New Orleans. It's 14-14. 14-27 left in the first. Introducing the Saturn Ion Quad Coupe, specifically designed and engineered for whatever's next. Look, Steph, it's adorable. Hi there. Hi, what kind is it? It's a mix, actually. Hmm. Part charcoal, part gas. Does it do any tricks? Yeah. yeah. Actually, it switches from gas to charcoal in just a few seconds. <clears throat> Listen. Steph and I are having a party tonight. Why don't you stop by? The Charbroil 2-in-1 Charcoal Gas Grill. It's man's new best friend. What a chick magnet! I'm thirsty. You want something? If you're up. I'm up. You want anything? It's okay. David, I'm in the kitchen. Can I get you anything? What do you have? A Coke. That sounds good. Are you sure? Yes, please. Thank you, Corey. Ice? Yes, please. Oh, thank you, baby. You're welcome. Oh, shave. That's irritating. Better buy Barbasol gel. New Barbasol Gel blocks skin irritation. Let's you go for the comfortable close shave of your life. Close. Who's next? Love close? Hate irritation? Better buy new Barbasol Gel. If the only obstacles you ever encounter are speed bumps, if you've never used mud as toothpaste, if the only thing you ever shred is cheese, get out of the way. Everybody's talking up the Quad Runner Vincent 500 from Suzuki. And now that a brand new Vincent with the manual transmission has arrived, who knows when they'll stop? The Suzuki Vincent. Get out of the way. Searching ultimate speed. After the front of the net, and it's good! Downloading Paul Correa, Van Hearn Mighty Ducks. Access the ultimate playoffs. The 2003 Stanley Cup playoffs on ESPN. Presented by Nextel, beginning Wednesday, April 9th. From the will to win. Emmett wants people to realize he's the best. To the drive behind it. He believed that players play best when driven to the edge. The athletes you think you know. Revealed by the people who do. Sports Century, weeknights at 8 on ESPN Classic. Indiana, six of nine. Steve Alford, one of two. And Billy Packer, show everybody how Indiana gets Alford open. 
Nobody in college basketball moves better without the ball than Steve Alford. So here's inside with Alford. Here he's going to move, try to rub his man off a screen inside. When the switch is created, Alford will pull out to the side. If the defense goes for the switch, Garrett or Thomas will move inside looking for the inside power play. Or outside to Steve for the three-pointer. And they now have an opportunity to go ahead here in this game. After that turnover, it's Indiana's ball. David Willard, number 40, on the floor for the first time for Jerry Tarkadian. Eldridge Hudson, number 33, also has checked in. And Garrett gets behind Willard. Got the field goal. Brent Willard is a good offensive shooter, but not a good defender. Great move by Indiana to go immediately at him defensively. Not the only weak defensive player on the UNLV team. Hudson gets it to Willard. And it's Vegas's ball. You know, Wade, before he went out with those two personals, had dished out five assists. Well, he's the all-time assist leader in single season in the history of college basketball. Indiana on a run of seven straight points here against Vegas right now. Trying to take Garrett. Nothing there. Good defense by Garrett. Now he turns on the man, and Halloway yanks the rebound, oh, and throws it to Banks, and gets it to Gilliam. Four-point turnaround on that steal. Bobby Knight, real upset with that one. He had two going one way and loses it to the other way. Deadlocked again, 16 all, 13-29 to go. Arcadian changed assignment. Garrett's in low again behind Willard. He drew the foul from Willard. He'll come to the free throw line. Jerry Tarkanian can forget about Willard being able to help Garrett. I think Tarkanian will probably switch, Billy. Now, he's getting a lot of help from his assistants right now. Timmy Gingrich is saying the same thing. Got to get some somebody inside to play Garrett. They can move Gilliam or Hudson and try and see what they can get defensively with that matchup. They do not want to get Gilliam into any kind of foul trouble over here. So now the Las Vegas coaches have a decision to make because Garrett is getting in behind Willard. And let's see, when they come down the floor the next time, we'll check that matchup. I read about the only thing they could do is put Willard on Isle because Isle's not going to be a big scorer anyway. Now at this end, Isle for Knight takes Willard. Hudson and Callaway was there. So Indiana's ball. Check the inside matchup, Billy. Who gets Garrett? Well, they can't change yet. Offered. A three-pointer. I think Paparo was late in getting his arms up, but it was a three, and Banks answers with a missed one. But it's going to be run down by Vegas. And there's one of the things Vegas does well, get the wide rebound. I think Vegas is really out of sync right now with the team they have on the floor. Garrett fronts Gilliam. Frustrating him on this side, but they get a ball in low to him anyway. Missed the shot, and Hudson hammers it away. No block out from the weak side. Well, when Gillian gets the ball, everybody from IU is really there. Now Smart will operate at the point and offer to look for the screens. And yes, Willard does come out on aisle. Smart comes up with that great leaping ability. Hits the field goal. 23 to 18. Indiana leading. Banks charges through Smart. Offensive foul. That's his first. And with Wade out of the ball game, you see how important he is. He's coming back in now, but how important he is to Jerry Jarkanian's club. They really have gotten out of sync offensively. Willard's going to sit down. Banks has got to sit down. He is one of the great leaders in college basketball. As Willard and Banks sit down, Wade, number 10, returns, along with Jarvis Bassnight. And there is the team leader. He played down at Oklahoma, transferred to a junior college, and then came to UNLV. This team responds to him verbally, and he also sets the example. He leads him on and off the floor. He's a remarkable young man. Tommy Steve Isle isn't doing a job as a sub. Comes all the way to the glass for the layup. He's doing a great job. Why he's so valuable, he can play any one of three positions. He goes back in the guard spot. He plays inside defensively. He can play the forward spot. Gilliam brings Garrett way out. They look for Gilliam. That jump hook is not there, and Callaway skies. Now Alford brings it down for the Hoosiers. 25-18, Indiana leading Vegas. Great pass to Smart, looking it off, and Smart couldn't hit it, and Gilliam brings it down for the Rebels. Here's Wade. 
Now it's Gilliam alone at the free throw line. He'll hammer that shot away. Uh, that's where Garrett has to be really careful. You can't wait for Gilliam to come down and post up because from about 16, 18 feet, he can drill the jump shot. Wade is taking Alford. That's the third Rebel who has been assigned to Alford. Isle out there with a hard screen, and Wade slashes through it. Now comes up with a defensive play. That's Alford came back on him and fouled him. Well, Wade is so quick. And Jerry Tarkane did not want to use Wade on Alford if he could help it. He felt he needed a bigger man to stop that jump shot. One of the keys to the defensive strategy that we saw put in at the Vegas practice. They're not going to switch off. They want their men to slash through the screens. And Wade did that time and stayed with his man. Gilliam down in low. And Callaway, who's doing a job on the glass. Loose. He's come up with it. And here's Alford. Indiana's really weak, uh, Brent, when Gillen gets the ball because they put so many men on him. There's nobody there in case he misses the rebound. Callaway off the dribble. Forced it. And Gilliam, underneath, was fouled by Isle. He's going to go to Vegas. So along with Billy Packer, I'm Brent Musburger. A crowd of 64,959, a record for a college basketball game. Watching Indiana shoot 71% from the field, Vegas 45%, and Thomas on Knight's bench with three quick personals. But still, Indiana leads by five. 10.30 to go here in the first half. Graham's open and Isle switched out and influenced the shot. Graham's pulling up the trigger on his jump shot, but that was a great screen by Wade. Wade would not give Alford an inch. Now he comes through the screens. He's got daylight. And Garrett is there. Neither team blocking out very well on missed shots. Eight for Garrett. And what has to please Knight so much is Isles' performance because Thomas is on the bench with three personals. Two, Two shots. shots. There's a foul down inside. And it's going to go against Graham. Gonna be They're going to shoot two at the other end. Paparo looked inside. Brent, that's some good piece of officiating because a lot of times you see officials looking only at the ball. There's a case where Paparo was really looking off the ball for the play. Let's see it inside. Who is going to be called on here? It's on Graham, away yep. from the ball on the far side. He took him right down to the ground, and Smart will shoot the free throws here at the other end. Freddie Banks and Gerald Patio return for Tarkanian. Seven team fouls against Vegas and six against Indiana. And we reach a point where the Shark says, I got to get the towel out. He got it out early today. I watched him nibbling over there about a minute ago. Pete Smart exploded the first time we had him on CBS this year. It was against Ohio State. Alford having a rough day, but uh, Smart did the job to pull uh, IU back to a big victory. We've got a television timeout. We're near the 10-minute mark. Indiana leads Vegas by nine. I have to focus, gather everything I've learned, all my successes, all my sacrifices, all my pain, and concentrate that energy into one moment. Ah! That's a moment I'll use every single day of my life. There are 360,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. It's adorable. Hi there. Hi, what kind Katie. is it? It's a mix, actually. Hmm. Part charcoal, part gas. Does it do any tricks? It switches from gas to charcoal in just a few seconds. The Charbroil 2-in-1 Charcoal Gas Grill. It's man's new best friend. Plastic holds the promise of a better world to new heights and giving our lives greater comfort. It puts the answers in our hands and hope in our hearts. Plastics make it possible. Get your exclusive Classic Big Ticket right here on ESPN Classic. Every month, you'll get a free pass to the biggest games in history. But wait, there's more. You'll also get the inside scoop from the people who play the game. Sunday is your big ticket to one of the greatest underdog upsets in sports history. Jimmy B's Wolfpack hunts down Houston's by Slamma Jamma. Plus, Clyde Drexler and Derek Wittenberg go one-on-one -on -one 20 years later. Get your Classic Big Ticket, 8 Eastern Sunday on ESPN in the mountains of North Carolina is a place where one can be far, far away. 
without going too far, where you may enjoy any number of activities and diversions, and where being intrigued is unavoidable. Be yourself in Asheville, North Carolina, a place in the mountains that will touch all the places in your heart. Call for a free visitor guide. I'm Ronnie Deutsch. I have settled IRS tax bills for only $20. $20! Ronnie was able to help us settle this debt for only $20. Saved me $34,000. Saved me $10,000. When she says that she can settle this for pennies on the dollar, she absolutely means it. You deserve a fresh start. Let me help you settle your IRS tax bill. Call the law officers of Ronnie Deutsch at 1-800-403-3838 for a free and confidential tax analysis. Call 1-800-403-3838. Well, here at Courtside, we have an excellent view, but James Brown, what about some of the other seats here in this vast dome? Well, Brent, even with the fans who are sitting up here, you got to wonder. 64,000 fans here, the largest crowd ever, unobstructed views everywhere, but those fans who are sitting 27 stories above the action and paid $17.50, you got to wonder if they're getting their money's worth. As a matter of fact, one fan I talked to said that from up here, the game is nothing but a rumor. Brent? <laughs> Thank you, James. Vegas hit five of its first eight shots. Since then, only 4-13 against this position. Man-to-man -man defense of Bob Knight. It's the pressure defense of the running Rebels against position man-to-man. They drop it to Gilliam, high and low, and they send it back to Wade. Patio, he's one of the threes, and he hits one, his second of the game. They are three of five. Isle puts it on the floor, and last night takes him, and here's Garrett up over Gilliam, but he traveled, coming off the fake. Gilliam underrated as a defensive post player. Holds his position very well, moves his feet, doesn't go ahead and slap with the hands. Patio's feeling warmed up with that three. He'd like another one. Loose on the floor, and Smart dove back in on the ball against Gilliam, and it was turned over, went out of bounds first. So it'll be Indiana's ball, and Vegas sets the pressure, and Smart breaks deep. Comes inside Gilliam, hits the layup against the full court pressure defense. Bob Knight will do that. He did it in the rematch against Iowa. He says you just go all the way when they set the full court press. That's the best attack against it. Patio second three here in the last few seconds. Long rebound off the hard rim. And Alford got a ball on it. And Callaway, who has played extremely well here so far, wraps it up. Did you notice when Patio knew that shot was off, how he took off to go get the rebound? Alford showing some pretty good ball handling and passing out here today as opposed to his normal shooting. Gets it's open. Switch. It was a little flat for Steve's shot. He's missed a couple from that spot over there. In that first game we had some poor shooting. Banks pulls up. A great hesitation dribble. Just throws the defender. Teams are slowing down a little bit right now. It's like they lost it. Looking for that second win. Holloway tried to get a field goal and couldn't. Quarterback brings it down. Adio off the move. The three not there. <laughs> when he misses, he misses very, very badly. Boy, I, I don't go crash that board. He throws some hard bricks up there. Normally a great three-point shooter is a guy that has it always soft around the rim. Garrett on a quick turnaround and Gilliam fouled him. That's his first personal foul for the hammer. Give you an idea about IU going to the foul line. In the tournament so far, they've been there 116 times. Their opponents only 61 times. That's 55 differential. So far, Vegas has not shot a free throw in this game. Indiana Garrett gives Indiana 7 of 8 at the free throw line. And Indiana has enjoyed an enormous edge because not they have been hitting them in the tournament, and they build a 33-25 lead, 7-47. Hitting them, they're shooting 82% from the foul line. Lost the patio maneuvers, and Garrett blocked it. Look at Isle, just wave off Alfred, said, I'll bring it up. So valuable to have a sub that can play multiple positions. All the way cut off, they get it back to Isle. It was a good cutoff by Bass Knight. Inside to Alford. It's Banks away from him with the body and then hits the two. Wade comes right back. It's a 10-point lead. Biggest of the game. 
Gilliam at the line. Should have been a foul on Garrett sticking his hand in his face after the shot. That's the second time he's come down and pulled up taking that little 16, 17 footer. Near the seven minute mark, Gilliam had a hand. Ball went out of bounds, Indiana's ball, and Gary Graham, senior guard, checks in. The guy that's Patio tired, sits down. Brett, the guy that's tired right now is Garrett, but he doesn't have anybody that's gonna go in for him uh, the remainder of this half. Push Thanks. by Banks. That's his second personal. This game is being called very tight, very tight. Right from the beginning. Now Alford, who is one of the best, as you might imagine, from the free throw line, he has hit 22 of 25 in the tournament, 88 percent. Now one of the top free throwers in the NBA was his one of his idols when he was growing up, Jerry Seesting, who plays for the Celtics, played for Steve's dad. High school, kid's been a gym rat all his life. Has the stroke. It's 10 again. Galloway sticking with Graham outside. They get into Bass Knight. Alford reaching in as assessed the personal. That's his second. So the winner of this game meets Syracuse for the national championship Monday night. In case you didn't see the score, Syracuse eliminated Providence 77-63 in our opening game. Here it is Indiana against Vegas, 37-27 Indiana, 6.48 in the first. Billy? Brent, on that last play, you can see Steve Alford let Banks go completely. Now Banks, excuse me, let Wade go completely. What, what Wade has got to realize that if he's not going to be played, he's got to start taking up the slack a little bit so he can get the ball back and make the good pass or take an occasional shot to keep Alford honest. Last night, misses the Rebels' first free throw on the one-on-one, save by Isle, ships it to Alford. Boy, this is a quality performance by Isle off Knight's bench. Gilliam taking Garrett. Nice man-to-man -man defense by Graham. Wade switches over on Smart. Alford couldn't do anything with Graham, so he sends it back to Isle. Clinic by Graham right there. Winds up in Callaway's hands. Now it's Steve. Call by the ref. Graham stuck him right in the chest with his hand on the shot. Tartanian wants a time. Good refereeing. I said before that Garrett did that on Gilliam, but it wasn't called. These refs are right on top of this game. Indiana 40, UNLV 27. It's a mix, actually. Mm. Part charcoal, part gas. Does it do any tricks? It switches from gas to charcoal in just a few seconds. The Charbroil 2-in-1 Charcoal Gas Grill. It's man's new best friend. Uh, eagle, uh, vulture, a pigeon, a uh, uh, hawk. Uh, broken sprinkler timer valve. Broken sprinkler timer valve. Booyah! <laughs> Are you obsessing over a home repair project? Come into Ace, the helpful place. This guy tells his buddy there's nothing he'd like more than a new riding lawnmower. Nothing too expensive, he says, but nothing's gonna give me any trouble. Nothing too complicated. Nothing better than making it look good and getting on with it. His buddy looks at him and says, nothing runs like a deer. Introducing the John Deere 100 series. Durability, precision, and exclusive support. For anyone who wants a tractor that's easy to run, easy to maintain, and easy to afford. Tradition. A look on the other guy's face. To be my own manning. Being a woman. Because last year, I couldn't. Millions of little girls. 
Every athlete is fueled by something. A revolution is underway. People everywhere are discovering a new way to protect their homes and families. All thanks to a new security system called SafeWatch EZ, only from ADT. Now you can arm your system with just the turn of a key. And with no codes to enter, SafeWatch EZ virtually eliminates accidentally setting off your alarm. Even if you misplace your key, you're still protected. It couldn't be easier or more affordable. Because now you can get SafeWatch EZ for as little as $99 plus up to 20% off your homeowner's insurance. Like every ADT system, SafeWatch EZ connects you to our monitoring center, where trained professionals watch out for you around the clock, helping protect you from burglary, fire, and carbon monoxide. No wonder more Americans choose ADT than any other security company. Call 1-800-ADT-ASAP. ADT, always there. Let me take us through that play a moment ago. Well, Graham gives a cheap shot to Alford right there. Now, that wasn't a big physical deal, but whenever you gain an advantage with contact, which was the case there on that particular play, the official wisely made the call. Graham fell in and if you're playing Alford, never go help out inside. You better stay right with him face to face. Now, Indiana led 9 to 8. It was 17 01. Thomas got his third personal foul. Since then, they have outscored Tarkanian 32 to 19. Joe Hillman replaces Steve Alford, who takes a break here in the first half. Now, Isle, who came in, has scored four points, but he has pulled down four rebounds and he's played strong defense. Look at the quick double on Gilliam, and so from the corner. Oh, what a running shot. Running three from the deep. You kidding me? Fading away, going to the deep corner with a good man on him. Vegas team was down 19 to Iowa. I think it was about 18. Earl still. They were able to come back. A lot of firepower Indiana faces here. Here's Isle, he's got an opening, he's tried to dish it off, the defense was there, Callaway beautifully follows it up. Now Joe Hillman positions the defense, Hillman. made his cut off. Hillman Hillman didn't show up on the stat sheet as even having played against LSU, but may have been one of the most valuable minutes we've seen all year. Getting him on the three-point play. Knocked out by Bassett. He had a three-point play and he fouled out. Dale Brown's strongest defender in that game. He really did a good, smart job leading the ball club. Like I said, it played less than a minute in the game, so he didn't officially show up in the stat sheet. Eldridge Hudson is the rebel who just checked in, and Smart is rejected. There by he is again. again. Joe Hillman following up. It seems like Vegas is making one effort on every play, and Indiana making two, and that's why they're capitalizing on it. The three from Banks, the other side. 11 points for Banks. And Vegas is 5 of 10 shooting threes. Stolen by Wade. They can work a run faster than any team you want to see. Hudson goes to the glass. Now Bobby Knight has taken a calculated risk here, taking Alfred out of the game. He may have to bring him back in quickly. Yeah, he's getting him up off the bench right now. He cannot afford, as did Jerry Tarkanian, making substitutions into that bench. They're not ready to play in a game like this. Here's Callaway. Back to Isle. He tracks it down. Isle wants to go right with that dribble. Give to Hillman. And Gilliam with another strong block. And this time, the Rebels come out. Banks with a three. By Hudson. Hey, here's a this is a big run. Now Bobby Knight doesn't want to call a time here, but he may have to take one. He's got Alford trying to get back in a game. He might not be able to get him back in quickly enough. 45-39. Garrett. And he ends it. A uh, huge hoop for Indiana at the 340 mark. Here comes that pressure again. And Gilliam fouled and scored and bring him to the free throw line. You know, Wade pushes that ball up the court, Brent, so positively that you can see how Vegas plays with him in the game. When he's not in there, this ball club not anywhere near as effective. Knight questions for ball. Gently. Gently questions. 
Wade has dished out 11 assists. Patio replaces Banks for UNLV at the 333 mark. 47-41, Indiana over the Rebels right now. That puts Wade up over 390 assists on the year. Last year he set an assist record of 283, so he's beaten it by 100 at Vegas, and he breaks, breaks Mark Jackson all-time NCAA record. And look at who's got that ball in his hands right now. That's Locked. 15 points for Gilliam. Ooh, what a screen by Isle. Against the double, they get a dial. Got to be an open Offer's man. Offer's open. Comes inside on the penetration. Couldn't get it to fall, but Garrett cleans it up. That's two big field goals by Dean Garrett. He and Hudson collide coming out. Both of these teams are really well coached, but I've never seen two teams this well coached that have given up that many second shots by bad blocking out. What the knocked away by Smart. Vegas will work an inbounds play. Gillum has great hands on the inside. Was a football player up till his junior year in high school. Recruited by a lot of people. They wanted to play tight end. South Carolina was among the schools. West Virginia, another one. And then was not highly recruited as a basketball player. Wade's three is short. Alford has it. Indiana pulls it up. Now Alford comes in all the way, and Gilliam is there with another block. He's been a monster inside. Graham coming through, through the foul. And so Gary Graham, with the third personal on Steve Isle, moves to the free throw line. They are fun to watch on the break. It just gets oh, exciting as they cross an half court. You know they're all moving. They really fill the lanes. Alford thought he had it made. Excellent timing on the inside by Gilliam. Here's Steve. He's beating him around the corner. There's no place to go. Gilliam times it perfectly and starts the break. Richard Robinson has checked in against Knight for Vegas. He'll wear double zero. He's in the middle on the far side there on the free throw line with Graham at the line. Knight is having a few calm words over there with Papa. Well, Bobby Knight, you know, a master of working at sidelines, and knows with this particular crew, particularly after what happened in the LSU game, this crew's not going to put up with any of his nonsense. So he's trying to gently work him, as opposed to going after him with that violent attitude he showed in the LSU game. Forty-nine, forty-three. Nice help by Hudson. Now Robinson is taking Garrett, and they try to get it in low to him. Arcania with a few fouls to give in that situation. And Bob Knight will try Todd Meyer, number 30. Steve Isle is going to get a round of applause from the Indiana fans. And a pat by Bob Knight. That's a quality minutes, just like we saw in the first game. Brower coming in and giving those quality minutes. Not a lot of stats, but good quality minutes. Callaway. It's going to be a thoroughbred. Only a sophomore. 51 43 Indiana. Coach the 210 mark here. Not even guard and Wade. Graham on the pull up was fouled by Smart. That's his first personal. And now Graham comes up to the free throw line. He's been averaging better than 12 points a game in the tournament so far. If you're wondering about the shooting percentage in the first half, Indiana at 61% and UNLV at 51%. Just think back to what we had in the first game. What a difference we're seeing here. And Banks comes back with 11 points and Patio sits down. Been a lot of the, the statistics there in regard to the high percentage and caused by second shots. Easy rebounds on the inside. Graham, who stroked two real good foul shots against Iowa, has looked poor in the last two. No violations now. No fouls. Gilliam returns. Hudson goes out. Graham's brother, an outstanding shooter for the University of Maryland. Boy, he hasn't looked good on one yet. Meyer rebounding. Oh. 
Walford bringing it up on Banks. Meyer to set the screen. Knocked him over. Touch last by Smart. Wade comes with a long pass, and Smart was able to come back and knock it out of bounds. Well, against a good athlete, you don't want to take that chance. And win it 53 to go. I was surprised Indiana went a little bit better with the ball there. And you're not going to get it all back so quickly. Banks. What are they going to call that? A shot? Call on Smart, his second personal. Foul is charged to number 23. I believe he signaled one on one. Yeah, that. one on one. And now they will try Cree Smith off Knight's bench. He's a 6'7 junior. So he has Meyer, Smith, Garrett, Callaway, and Alford out against Gilliam, Robinson, Graham, Banks, and Wade. 149. Trouble that line. And Gilliam rising up. He's fouled on the shot, and he'll come to the free throw line. Garrett working away on him. He picks up his first person. Brent, both of these coaches will look at this film later this summer and wonder how so many second shots have taken place because they're normally very good at blocking out inside, particularly fundamentally sound on a foul shot. We saw Syracuse get an awful lot of second shots or second rebounds off missed free throws. And that's been the difference in the scoring. 51-43 as a result of that. Indiana with the lead. Now it's 51-44. Gilliam with 16 points here in the first half. Well, Gilliam known as the Hammer. Got his nickname from Spoon James. How'd you like to get a nickname from a guy called Spoon? Now that's scary. <laughs> this is the second free throw shooting really hurting UNLV. Banks all over Smith. He better give up the ball because Banks will take it from him. Shifts back to Callaway. Open is Smith. Double team. Somebody's got to be open. It could be Alford. He pulled it back out. And they're off of Meyer pretty much. Here he is. Now it's Cree Smith coming in. Callaway gets Good two fake. Goes to the glass for the layup. Is he going to be a big timer or what? John Thompson taking a look at this game. Maybe thinking Olympic material for that guy. Now it's Vegas' turn. And they've been quiet from three range here of late. Banks got Smith on him. He can get one off. He's a lot quicker. Alford sloughs on Wade. Here's Banks. He there comes up over him and there he hits it three. Good call, Mr. Packard. Well, he's being played by a man not quick enough to stay with him out there. Boy, Vegas is doing a lot of double teaming here. And when you double team Indiana, they'll find the open man. There he is. Out of way. Almost walked. Bobby Knight works on this semi delay a lot. Very difficult to double team one of his teams. Shot clock is turned off. Indiana bringing it down. Bree Smith was the open man. Tracks it down. And then missed the layup underneath, and Robinson comes out. They'll have to hurry. Graham at the buzzer. The end of the first half, and it's been a good one. Knight in Indiana lead Tarkanian and Vegas. 53 to 47. Jim Nance and James Brown are standing by. We'll return to the Superdome after this message and a word from your local stations. Think, read, react, struggle, struggle. succeed, grow. From the floor, classes in session. There are 360,000 NCAA student athletes. And each one of us is getting two educations. Look, staff, it's adorable. Hi there. Hi, what kind is it? It's a mix, actually. Hmm. Part charcoal, part gas. Does it do any tricks? So yeah. Well, actually, it switches from gas to charcoal in just a few seconds. <clears throat> Listen, 
Steph and I are having a party tonight. Why don't you stop by? The Charbroil 2-in-1 Charcoal Gas Grill. It's man's new best friend. What a chick magnet! Oh, shave. That's irritating. Better buy Barbasol gel. New Barbasol gel blocks skin irritation. Let's you go for the comfortable close shave of your life. Close. Who's next? Love close? Hate irritation? Better buy new Barbasol gel. ESPN HD. Sponsored by Philips and Best Buy. The Bambino to the Bronx Zoo. You don't like it? You're fired. Mr. October to Mr. November. Salute the Pinstripes' 100th birthday with a marathon of classics. Damn Yankees. Continues 8 p.m. all this week, only on ESPN Classic. 1986. How much money do you owe today? 4000 6000 Over 10 Credit card bills? Personal loans? How long has it been? Feel any better than last month? The month before? The plain and simple is, life adds up. The answer is, you don't have to just deal with it. You can do something about it now, today, which could make every day better and bring you closer to becoming debt-free. Call or visit for Care One Credit Counseling right now. It won't cost you a penny. There are no upfront fees. It's a nonprofit service. Our guarantee is that we will treat every person with honesty, understanding, and respect. Humility, humanity, and caring. If you allow us to help, and you do your part, you will lower your monthly bills. You'll feel better right away, and you'll be on your way to becoming debt-free. You can do it. Care One will help. Don't put it off any longer. Don't wait until it hurts. Raise your hand up, say no more, and make the call or visit online today. Care One. For you. Well, Billy Packer is Jerry Tarkini and now begins to hustle out here toward the court. We've got six seconds left toward the start of the second half. The Vegas players just filing out on the floor. They're not even getting an opportunity to warm up. That's very unusual. It really is. I wonder if somebody forgot uh, on Jerry's part to let his club know what the time was left on the clock. You can't come out without getting a little bit warm. And I'll be shocked if they could come out. Freddie Banks, example, never even touched the ball. They may start the second half without Jerry on the bench. Now, the locker rooms are quite a ways out. And you can see Tarkanian battling his way through the crowd. We're ready to get it started here as Jerry joins the team at the bench. Bench. Indiana came out with about how much time on that clock to shoot around? Well, normally you want to get yourself three, four minutes, and I think Jerry's saying that we weren't notified, but that's a big mistake on the part of uh, somebody from UNLV to not let people know when they were going to go ahead and start this second half. And you're saying, Billy, it is difficult for the players uh, to oh, start out cold and be loose. Impossible. I mean, you've got to come out and get a couple of shots up. Now, this is a club that's in great physical condition, but you want to at least touch the ball a little bit. Now, Knight is saying when that goes to 20, you get them out here and let's play. I was ready. Let's get at it. So Bob Knight, he was a different sort of a leader in the first half regarding the officials. Billy, tell us about it. In my opinion, Bobby Knight knew he overstepped his bounds. And you did a great job with him, Brent. I'm not smoking you a little bit, but you did a great job talking about that technical foul and that he deserved it in the last game against LSU. He got himself a little over the edge in that game, maybe a way over the edge. Probably should have been slapped for at least another technical. He knew it. He came into this game. He's been very passive on the bench. Look for him this second half, maybe to re go that same way because the officials are keeping an eye on him. All right, it is a six-point difference as we start the second half. Indiana 53, UNLV 47. And Vegas and the traveling Reds, and Wade with a three uh, is off, the and Alford pulls it down. We get word from the table that the NCAA committee does not have any responsibility. It is up to the team. They know how much time there is when they leave the floor to get back out and warm up. They want it smart off his hand out of bounds on the turnover. It's Vegas ball. Good quickness on the part of Wade. Try to get the little backdoor cut, but UNLV is going to have to run up and down this court a couple of times to get loose. You can see that brick that Wade threw up the last time down. Tough to come out and make, make a shot if you haven't warmed up. Alford's not even guarding Wade. Foul. Missed the three. And this past night to Gilliam. Wade again with those quick hands. Causing trouble. Ooh. 
Wade got in foul trouble in the first half, and I think that's what cost UNLV greatly because it really got him out of sync with him off the floor. Garrett Travel. Two quick turnovers here as we start the second half, and 10 total for the game for the Hoosiers. Down to four. Away from the ball, down on the inside. Smart and Banks entangled down there. And that for Smart is his third personal. So he breaks the assist record that had been set by, among others, Mark Jackson of Georgetown and Milt Wagner of Louisville. Mix up on the out of bounds sideline call. Now we have another problem. He's all right. He didn't want to come out of there. Indiana's starting very slow, so maybe my theory goes right out the window. Everybody, keep your players locked up until just before you start. Believe me, it won't happen again to UNLV if they're fortunate enough to advance in this tournament. Alford. He was wide open when he turned on that shot. Got free on the inside and those great screens that Indiana runs inside. 55-51. Banks, and there's his fifth three of this game. He is five of seven now from three-point range. Shooting well coming into this ball game and so far in the tournament, only shooting 33% for the three-point line. Maybe five. Mark Wade over there smiling at Bobby Knight. He likes to go ahead. He put that smile on Iowa. Great story out here for Indiana as I see Steve Isle starting the second half. Now, as you all know, Daryl Thomas is normally a starter, but he picked up three fouls, and he's been on the bench since early in the first half. The reason he did not start is because Bob Knight remembers an incident when he was at Ohio State playing for Fred Taylor, and he played a great first half and thought he deserved to start, and Taylor put his starters back in. Patio, the pull-up shot. Smart, had it, oh, and then lost it. And Vegas has a possession. So ever since then, if someone plays well, he'll get to start the second half. And last night, hits him with a field goal. Brent, I'm going to throw something at you right here. Although you don't want to guard Wade because he's not a great shooter, I think it'd be smart to go ahead and put a man right in his face to take away those passing angles he's got. You know, he's out there just like in a rocking chair, and he can pick and choose his spots. Indiana's ball, and now Thomas comes into the game, and Smart sits down. So Vegas ahead. 56-55, they were down by as many as 14 points. Alford fakes and he gets inside Banks. Steve Alford with the threat of the three-pointer, you almost have to go off your feet because you can't let him have that uncontested jumper. 17 great with for the, the game man. to give the Hoosiers the lead. Banks is three again. That's six of eight for Freddie Banks. 20 points for the game. Callaway needed room. He wanted to drive on Patio that time, but Alford was in the way. Here's Thomas. His second field goal. Good job by Gilliam. Short and underneath was Wade. He'll come back and reset. Adio. Quick move on Callaway. Up over Garrett. Gilliam offensive rebound. He's fouled. He'll shoot a pair. Now, Brent, another tough thing with Wade. If you're not guarding him, you're not blocking him out. So if you're not close to him, he sneaks in there and gets that cheap rebound. Wouldn't be bad for a couple of minutes to change that defensive strategy and say, wait, I'm going to play you for a while. Let's see what you can do in that case. So I'll only one away from fouling out of the game. Knight wanted to have a few words with Callaway, who returns. Gilliam at the line. 
That hurts Bobby Knight because he can't go to that bench as deep as Jerry Tarkanian. Matter of fact, he doesn't want in a game like this have to go very far at all on that bench. That's 21 for Gilliam. For UNLV, number 32, Gary Graham returns. Now, the reason for this substitution pattern, I think Jerry Tarkanian figures that he can rebound with Indiana with just Hudson and Gillum in there, so he really has gone to the three-guard offense. Bobby Knight gets a little count, another guard to save Isle for a while. Joe Hillman, and Isle sits down. Both coaches kind of matching up here. Indiana down by two, 61-59. Callaway steps rattled. Now, I don't know if he traveled on that play, and I think Bobby Knight's making a good point over there. It was an unusual looking step, but he still had his pivot foot on the floor. It's one you want to take a close look at. Anytime you do that unusual looking play, referees blow that whistle on you. Wade left alone. Now he faded. Garrett off with the rebound. The three rattles out. Graham rebounds. Quickly to Banks. He puts one up on the move. Hillman's rebound for Indiana. Good defensive job by Hillman on that play. He knew what Freddie Banks was going to do. Thomas with a quick turn, and Garrett alone on the other side with the offensive rebound and a field goal. Deadlocked with 14.30 to go in regulation. Gilliam. He gets the roll. So tough in there. Doesn't jump that high, he just has great positioning. The screen's being set down low for Alford. Thomas against the double team. Comes up with the shot. Came back inside and he was fouled. That's the first on Hudson. Okay, son. Thomas, tough inside. You remember at the start of this year, he was suspended from the club for a while because he wasn't going to class before any game started at all. He got the message in a hurry. We've got a timeout at the 14-minute mark. It's a television timeout. We'll be right back. cash fast just pick up the phone now for up to five hundred dollars qualify in two minutes or less national money service can help you 24 hours a day seven days a week you're welcome the money you need will be in your account tomorrow thank you so much let us help you with unplanned car repair bills medical bills household repairs or anything else you need money for so if you need up to five hundred dollars before your next paycheck we can help call now call national money service now 
has a story. You just knew you were in the presence of greatness. A story that inspires. He was winning Wimbledon with one hand, then fighting the ills of this world with the other. That brings us together. When Magic announced that he had the AIDS virus, Bird broke down and cried. And defines our history. Jack and Tina were thinking. He said, this is America. These are their stories. This is the award-winning Sports Century. 8 p.m. weeknights on ESPN Classic. Well, we have been enjoying the pictures today and now tonight from the Goodyear Blimp America out of Houston, Texas, the Captain John Moran. And inside the Superdome here in New Orleans, Vegas trailing at the half has taken a 63-61 lead, 14 minutes to go in regulation. And Mark Wade with 16 assists in each one becomes a new record. And Brett, that's 16 assists, that's good for 32 points. So half of the points scored by Vegas this year have been directly off passes from Wade. IU has to figure out some way to shut him down in that area. Well, good Ball for him to cut her count away. And he was foul when he came up in the air. That's Graham's third personal. There's Indiana rubbing those screens off on the inside. Callaway and Alford looking to come off double post. They really do it well. Indiana has not scored against man to man out of bounds, but I look for somebody to get a cheap one here one of these times. Well, Wade fought over that screen beautifully. He gets caught on one there. They sealed him and that gave Alford enough time. Nobody works without the ball any better than Alford does on those screens, like Scott May used to do on that great team that Bobby had in 1976. Or Bill Bradley of Princeton. The three from Banks, not there. Garrett rebounds, and now Indiana can take the lead. Notice how Indiana has cut the break off today. Vegas has not been able to get running. The lead for the Hoosiers at 13.08, and it's Alford who backs up field goals. Wade's got to feel like he's running among the trees in there trying to get through. Graham, short. Callaway rebound. Alford spins inside on Wade, and Garrett underneath for the rebound is fouled by Robinson. Here we saw, we talked about inside with Alford. Now watch, Alford use his screens. There's Wade trying to fight over the top. Now that was an illegal screen moving over there by Thomas. Then Steve goes wide, and when Wade tried to fight over the top of the screen, Alford stayed down on the baseline to be wide open. Here is the Indiana set on the out of bounds. That's three team fouls against Vegas this half, two against Indiana. Gilman catching Alford inside to Thomas. Callaway comes around to help. Back in low to Garrett. Against the double team, he goes to the glass. What we're seeing right now is clinic half-court offense by Indiana. They're taking great shots, great passing. And Gilliam. Garrett knocks it out of bounds. So the JC out of the City College of San Francisco contributing here for night. Brent, one of the reasons Vegas did not get the break going is because Indiana is using the passing lanes so well, they're not taking any bad shots, so there are no wild rebounds. Jarvis Bass Knight into Tarkanian's lineup. Patio's been sitting for a long time over there. Graham has not had a good game. I look for Patio to get back in here quickly. Gilliam got the roll. That's 26 points. Boy, Gilliam uh, showing that he has such a soft shot. These are tight rims, but he just lays it up there and it sinks in. <laughs> Using Hillman at the point as Smart sits out and Hillman burned him inside. Basket counts. He caught it on the way up, on the way down. Basket was going anyway. Boy, Joe Hillman 
really knows how to operate an offense. Sitting out there at the key, finding the open man and getting open himself. Gilliam goes in, snaps a high pass. Great defense by Garrett. All Alton. the way there for the rebound. Garrett altered the shot. Brent, I think Jerry Tarkanian's had a rough day substituting in this ball game. You notice that when he went in with a smaller lineup, it allowed Bobby Knight to use him in good pace. And Alford right there. 23 for Alford. 71-65. He's played into Bobby Knight's hands here by having a smaller team, which allows Knight to use a small club. Gillian comes back big for him and can't put it down, and Thomas. Now here's Joe Hillman. Tries one to Garrett off his hands. He recovers. He Loose on the floor, Callaway up. And it's Hillman. Last night, reaching around Thomas. That's his second personal. Not yet in the penalty, so the ball will be taken out of bounds. Well, it's charged number 44, Jarvis Bessemer. Tarkanian wants a timeout. You could see Wade holding his hand at the table. Jerry Tarkanian wants a timeout. 71-65, 10-29. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need a little help with lawn care? Come into Ace. A helpful place. It's adorable. Hi there. Hi what kind Katie. is it? It's a mix, actually. Hmm. Part charcoal, part gas. Does it do any tricks? It switches from gas to charcoal in just a few seconds. The Charbroil 2-in-1 Charcoal Gas Grill. It's man's new best friend. Okay, sweetie. Bye-bye. Can you check on my flight, please? Sure. Call team. Hey, Vanessa, have you finished my brother's birthday card yet? Have now. Now at Radio Shack, get this PCS Vision enabled color screen phone from Sprint just $49.99 after $130 in instant savings. Or a Fujifilm digital camera just $199.99 plus a free photo accessory kit after mail in rebate. How do you always have the answers to everybody's questions? Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. If you want to be voted an Automobile Magazine All Star, you better be good. If you want a unanimous vote, you better be Mazda 6. Only Mazda 6, the car they said delivers high content of engineering and luxury features, got the thumbs up from all the judges. Oh, and these guys? No all-stars here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lease an all-new Mazda 6i for $239 a month for 39 months with $25.39 due at lease signing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can I write a check? Yo. 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 Check. Check. Yo. 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 Can I write a check? Yo. Next time, use the Visa check card instead of checks. It'll get you in, out, and on with life. Yo. Gee. Yo, gee. Yo. Let's go. For over 60 years, Owens Corning has been advancing the science of insulation, roofing, siding, sound control, and more. And everything we've learned, we've put into one very special place, your home. Owens Corning, innovations for living. This is your classic big ticket to one of sport's greatest upsets. Jimmy V's Wolfpack hunts down Houston's Spy Slamma Gemma. Plus, Clyde Drexler and Garrett Wittenberg go one-on-one -on -one 20 years later. Get your classic big ticket, 8 Eastern Sunday on ESPN Classic. Mark Starr looks, throws. Touchdown Packers. Quarterback seat, touchdown Mark Starr. Packers win. Classic. We're live at the Superdome, New Orleans, Louisiana. Already today, Syracuse advanced to the championship game, eliminating Providence. And they will meet the winner of this with Indiana up right now. And that's the final score for the Orangemen earlier today. Let's take a look at that pick, Billy, you were referring to. Well, here's a case where you're screening a man with the ball 
Wade gets picked off right there. Now watch what happened. Steve Offord showed the pass, froze the defense, and then went up for his jump shot. He's got the whole package. Really understands how to play the game. Indiana on a 10-2 run over the last four minutes. And Vegas has hit only two of its last 12 shots. And the pace of the game has been IU's pace. Offord was trying to draw a foul there. Took a bad shot, but he thought maybe he'd get fouled in the, in the process. And he's talking to the official on the way down. UNLV has also cooled off from three-point range. They hit the first three, and since they have missed five, there was a whistle blown on the inside as Graham came down. A summary of this game. Indiana 62% from the field. UNLV's 44 points from the front line. And Wade with 16 assists, a new tournament record as Callaway is assessed his second personal. Now four team fouls against UNLV and three against Indiana. We're at the 10 minute mark. Graham on a foul trying to draw, make a moving screen. Brent, I think that Jerry Darkanian has a lineup on the floor now that matches up and creates some problems for Indiana. Bring in Patio back in the ball game. Watch Graham coming across. Moving screen, calls the foul. That's four fouls on Graham. He's going to be sitting down here shortly with Banks coming back in there. So Jerry Tarkanian will have his best club on the floor in a minute or so. Matteo taking Callaway. Callaway goes right inside with him. Great shot. Callaway. Gilliam coming way out to get the ball. Garrett has played with a lot more intensity since those two were pushing and shoving underneath a while ago. Notice the banks out of the game. Nobody looking for the three-pointer. Game's all inside it. Alford's not within 20 feet of his man. Garrett trying to deny Gilliam the ball. He gets it against a triple team. Comes up with a jump hook right-hander, and Thomas snaps away the rebound. And foul goes against Vegas. Jarvis Bassnight. His third. And they don't want to get into the penalty too early here. He's sitting back, relaxing. The winningest coach percentage-wise and active coach in basketball and only stands behind Claire B in all-time winning percentage. Nine minutes with Banks hounding Alford. Banks won the PCAA every single year. He's coached a team in the league. Somebody got hurt inside, Thomas. I got to figure that was not just a stray elbow there. He got hit right in the chest. Lost his breath. Then he's talking about it. Boom. You think he couldn't throw a block as a tight end? Forearm shiver coming up there. And it's not like Thomas doesn't have a pretty good sized chest himself. There's Bobby, nice and calm. He's probably thinking, Gilliam is my kind of player. He is a tough player down in that hole, let me tell you. Knocked away by Wade, didn't follow him, but Hillman is there again, picking up the loose ball. Hillman makes no mistakes. Knight wants Callaway inside. Offered off a fake. Now he gets inside. Bass Knight fouled him. That is his fourth personal foul as Alford goes to work on him. Well, again, because of his great shooting ability, when he goes with those pump fakes, you almost have to go up there to try to block it. And then Alford just stays on the ground and goes ahead and gets off the easy shot. Did not have a good first half in the few minutes that he played. Jerry Tarkanian's had a rough time for the substitution all day. All right. Vegas already has committed seven personals this half. So... The bonus coming up the rest of the way for Indiana. They have only three team fouls, and it's 73-65. And you just saw a rare sight with Alford missing one, missing and now two. I don't think I've ever seen that. I'm sure, it's happened. 
And Brent, let's just remind you, LSU, remember the situation LSU was in with team fouls. Indiana only had four there late in the... Uh... That was Hillman's foul. He was pushing Gilliam out of the way. So that's only the fourth team foul. Dallas charged to number 44, Joe Hillman. Garrett just walked over to him and said, don't force it, Joe. Don't force it when you come through there. You know what it means when you don't have a lot of team fouls. As it goes down to the wire, you can afford to give a foul, let him have the ball out of bounds. Dick Paparo was huddling there with Banks and Alford and talking to the two veterans. Second half has been Indiana's game style. But that's Vegas' style, the three from Banks. Don't you ever count this bunch out. They are loaded with firepower. Total team movement now. Everybody rubbing off screens. This Hillman off was he crunched. Banks on one side and Willard on the other. They sandwiched. Hillman and Banks picks up his third. But you don't expect Hillman to score, but he goes and takes it inside, which is wise. If you're only going to show the pass, the defense can get accustomed to your style. Shooting to number 44. Joe well, the winner of this game takes on Syracuse on Monday night. And again, a reminder, 8 p.m. Eastern time when we'll come on the air. Oh, Bobby Knight giving weight of a lot of earful on the sideline. Two good free throw shooters. Bobby's first West Coast recruit. So Wade brings it down. Hillman with Patio. This is Wade. And Patio's three is short. But the long rebound. And Banks misfires. And it'll go over. Touch last by Las Vegas. Seventy-four, sixty-eight, seven twenty-eight in regulation. Here's Hillman coming down against the full court pressure. Gets the ball into Garrett's hands and then positions himself for the offensive rebound. And here's Alford. Bangs in. A two, and Knight is furious. They're calling it a two. They say that his foot was on the line. Good call by the ref, but again, Brent, Hillman. How many times has he been there today? And he's picked off by Willard. And that's an illegal screen on Willard. Jerry Tarkanian not getting much out of Willard at all today. I think that's a change he's got to make. I thought it was three when he went up. No, he's, he's got a part of the toe on the line. Yeah, you, I agree. You cannot touch it in any way, shape, or form. You can see right there, he's got part of that toe on the line. I'll bet you something here, Brent. He doesn't miss two on this one. Keith Smart is returning for Knight. For UNLV, number 32. And Gary now Graham Gary Graham will replace Wade. He wants to give Wade a rest here at the seven-minute mark. Well, the way Indiana is being patient with the ball the rest may be a very big gamble on this on the part of Jerry Tarkanian now he's gonna have to go all out for the next couple of minutes 27 points for Alford it's a 10 point Indiana lead at the seven minute mark Garrett doing a nice job on Gillum inside Alford is with Graham. Ooh, nice pass. A little wrap around to Hudson and Alford. His third. But nobody goes to the foul line. You don't want to get a cheap one inside like that, but nobody goes to the foul line. Only the fifth team foul. 
team's fifth. Billy, how can the running Rebels get this into their tempo? What must Tarkanian do now to turn this into an up-tempo schoolyard game, if you will, which they are devastating at? Well, the problem is that when Hillman in the game, Alfred was free, didn't have to handle the ball. Bobby Knight did a great job in that regard. They're just ah! taking some bad threes inside. Well, let's charge to number 20. Knight had a question at the table. That's Smart's fourth personal foul. So we're going to see Hillman before this is over. 628, 78 68. And the next one, they'll be shooting a one on one, and Gilliam takes Thomas back outside, and that's 28 points for Armin Gilliam here this afternoon. If this was a fight, you would say you knock Vegas down several times, but you can't knock him out. And Alford coming around was hit by Hudson. Now there's a case where Hudson just not quick enough to play Steve Alford, who gave him the little clutch move on the sidelines, well, just went right on by him. Easy call for the official. For Indiana, number 12, Steve Alford shooting. Well, really more than any game that we have seen lately with Indiana, Alford seems to be taking charge offensively. As Hillman does return and Smart goes out. One of the reasons for that, I think, Grant, we just saw him against LSU. LSU had a superior athlete that had size on Steve Albert. I don't think you can play him with a man of equal size. And certainly can't play him with a smaller man because he took Wade and went right over him and around him with the screens. Wade coming back into the ball game now. Patio out. So for Tarkanian, Wade, Graham, Hudson... Gilliam and Banks. This is a three guard offense. And Gilliam and Hudson, they're down by the 10 point difference at the six minute mark here in regulation. You notice how Wade is not forcing the ball up the court quickly. He's kind of walking it up the floor. Banks on the two. And Alford got a hand on it and there's Garrett. The other thing you're gonna see Indiana start doing now, they're gonna start playing clock by moving the ball out a little bit further. Hillman in the game, he can run this offense to perfection. Callaway using the glass. He's only had two field goals here in the second half, but he made that one count. Notice how quickly Indiana gets back on defense. Garrett very active against Gilliam down in the blocks. Banks, and that's a two-point shot. And that's 25. Banks and Alford. They're going to shoot him out here in New Orleans. Uh-oh, Callaway coming down. It looks like he has a cramp and not a knee problem here. He's reaching for the back of his calf. Remember how he says it's a cramp. Remember how he went down in that LSU game? I never thought we'd see him back. He was out for five games this year with that knee problem. Callaway's still in and no timeout was necessary. Bobby Knight got a break. Galloway's a tough youngster out of Cincinnati. Played through that knee pain most of the season. Offered short on that shot. Patio comes out, and Indiana is back defensively. There's Banks. Boy, they'll pull up and take that three from anywhere. 28 points for Freddie Banks. 82-75, 448. They got Hillman. Callaway inside. A fine move. Now Wade's starting to push it up court. And he was blocked. We haven't, we haven't seen that much this second half, and that's the first time Wade really pushed it up there. That's what gets UNLV going. The foul is charged to number 12, Steve Alford. Now they're going to give it to Alford, which is his fourth personal at the 418 mark. Team seven. Well, obviously, Indiana can't afford that. Timeout, UNLV. Now, UNLV, Jerry Tarkanian has called this timeout at the 418 mark. So he has one to go.
I swim the 200. I study sociology. I grind out laps. I cram for tests. I race nationals. I take finals. And when I finish, I'll be ready to start. There are 360,000 NCAA student athletes, and we're all training to perform in whatever we go on to do. This weekend, Enterprise Rent-A-Car announces special low rates from just $9.99 a day. Friday till Monday from just $9.99 a day. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. 1-800-RENT-A-CAR It's adorable. Hi there. Hi, what kind is it? It's a mix, actually. Oh. Part charcoal, part gas. Does it do any tricks? It switches from gas to charcoal in just a few seconds. The Charbroil 2-in-1 Charcoal Gas Grill. It's man's new best friend. When athletes sweat, they lose more than just water. Gatorade puts back sodium and potassium, proven to replenish and rehydrate athletes better than water. Gatorade. Is it in you? They've been loved, they've been hated, but no team has been more dominant. Than those damn Yankees. You know, on their 100th birthday, salute the pinstripes, the Bambino to the Bronx Zoo. You don't like it? You're fired. Mr. October to Mr. November. See ya. Games that were perfect, players that were clutch. Uh, Yankee These pinstripes never fade. Damn Yankees. The marathon continues 8 p.m. all this week, only on ESPN Classic. Guys, ready for the movie? Yeah. Want some popcorn? Yes. <laughs> Everybody upstairs. What's happening, Mom? No, no she's going upstairs all the way. Up. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Hello? This is Mike with Brings Home Security. Is everything okay? No, somebody just tried to break in. I'll notify the police. Thank you. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Just stay close. Brings Home Security protected this family, and they can help protect yours, too. The Brinks Award-winning Monitoring Center provides a quick link to emergency authorities 24 hours a day. Call Brinks Home Security now and get a 10-point home security analysis free. You can also get the Brinks Standard System installed for just $99. That includes the Brinks Security Keypad. As a special offer, we'll install a second keypad absolutely free. That's a $125 value. You also get the security of the Brinks name. You're never really home alone when you have Brinks Home Security. Brinks Home Security. Dedicated to fast response and peace of mind 24 hours a day. Call now. A nine-point lead by Indiana and a date against Syracuse in the championship game. There's the timeouts. Knight with four, Tarkanian with one. And you can see the team fouled both in the bonus now and the possession arrow, Indiana. Well, I've got a quick moment. I want to pass along our best wishes to Gene Peterson. He's the director of operations for CBS Sports. He's back in the hospital in the New York area, and I know he's watching this game this afternoon. And Gene, we have missed you out here in New Orleans. Steve Alford and the Hoosiers come back to work at the 418 mark, 84-75. Jerry's starting to go ahead and chew on those fingers right now. He was here in 19. Here comes the shark uh, chant. But he was there in 1977, the year that Al McGuire's Marquette team won, lost a tough game to the University of North Carolina. Mark Wade has not scored a point this afternoon. But he has passed out 17 assists. Six guys off that club that year, Brent were drafted in the NBA. It's still a record. Now, no post offense right here. Kind of a spread by Indiana. And they run this as well as anybody that's played college basketball. They've got Hillman. She, what a game he's playing. They will get the backdoor cuts. Three. Thomas and Callaway going up high along with Hudson. Hudson hitting the ball last, and it's Indiana's ball. What you have there is a case for Freddie Banks trying to get back too much too quick. Wade fouls Alford. 
That's three on Mark Wade, and Steve Alford gets to shoot one and one. What is so impressive about this Indiana team when you think about Knight is the fact that here this afternoon, off the bench, he has brought two players, Steve Isle and Joe Hillman. And they both technically have played the game so well. Yeah, he's tough, and yeah, he'll drill it into your head, but I guarantee you when you walk away from him, if you listen and you sort out the nonsense that he hands out, you'll know how to play the way he wants it played. You know who has sat down most of the time? Keith Smart, okay? Right. A kind of guy that would love to be challenged athletically by UNLV, and that's not what Bob Knight needed today. So he goes with a Hillman who will play within himself. I think Bob Knight has had the much of the better of it in regard to substitutions today. Hudson. Hudson powers back for the rebound. Out of bounds. Vegas ball. There's a fellow who would have been a great player except for a knee operation which caused him to miss an entire year before he came back for the running Rebels, and that's Hudson. You know, yesterday about the, the recruitment of Hudson. And there's Bass Knight back in. Hudson goes out. Jerry Tarkanian said they went to the championship game and Hudson got in an argument with his coach and most of the other coaches scouting him didn't want anything to do with it. Ball on the floor. Reaching in was Callaway. Big break. Sure was. Big break for UNLV. The third personal on Callaway. The arrow was facing down Indiana's way. They would have got the ball on a turnover. It's 88-76. Indiana leading UNLV. Gary Graham returning. So the Shark wants to go with the three guards, Bass Knight and Gilliam. Hasn't Gilliam played a great game for him, though, with 28 points down there? Gilliam and Banks have both given him solid games. I think everybody else, uh, you might say Wade also, but everybody else has actually played under their ability. But Wade just wasn't able to hit any shots either, though, though. Well, he's not going to take many. Freddie Banks had a little special hairdo uh, put together when he was at Vegas after uh, the wins in the regionals. Had the number 13 carved into his head. Uh, is that the right word, carved? I guess not, probably. It looks like a carved job. Shave, that's the better term. Appreciate it. Three fifteen. Indiana up by 10. Nice move by Hillman. Points are not important here. It's the clock that's the key. Hillman understands that perfectly. There he is again, being the man in the right place. And a foul as Hillman got down the line. That's the fourth on Wade. Boy, Hillman is continuing to do a superb job here for the Hoosiers. But Brent, the key when you're a substitution playing for Bob Knight is to understand what your role is and carry it out. Don't try to do any more or less than that. And that's what we're seeing right here. He's the guy that created tempo here in this second half and kept them in a half-court offense so UNLV never could get running. But there's still time for this bunch. Here's Banks looking for it as he went up in the air. He was fouled. And Hillman picks up his second. You don't want to foul if you can help it. If you're Indiana, you'd just as soon rather have them put it up with a 10-point lead. Make that clock keep moving. Second personal foul. Shooting two for UNLV. You know the other thing, Brett, that's interesting is today, I can't remember a time when UNLV made their press work. Well-drilled club from Indiana just took it away from them. Well, that's stroke. the first time I've seen the shark with a logo on a towel, and if he loses this, he'll go back to the plain white, folks. Enough of that bad luck. Down to eight. They go to the trap, and Alford uses a timeout. They had four. He saw he was in trouble. He alertly used the timeout. They have the 239 mark, 88-80, Indiana, and we'll be right back. This guy tells his buddy there's nothing he'd like more than a new riding lawnmower. Nothing too expensive, he says, but nothing's going to give me any trouble. Nothing too complicated. Nothing better than making it look good 
ain't getting on with it. His buddy looks at him and says, nothing runs like a deer. Introducing the John Deere 100 series. Durability, precision, and exclusive support. For anyone who wants a tractor that's easy to run, easy to maintain, and easy to afford. Introducing the Saturn Ion Quad Coupe, specifically designed and engineered for whatever's next. There was an accident. We had an accident. There was a storm, and we couldn't get out. We couldn't get out because of the storm. People started dying. Their bodies disappeared. I was standing right there. I saw what happened. This doesn't make any sense. What happened at the motel? Identity. Tell me what you saw. Rated R in theaters everywhere April 25th. Plastic holds the promise of a better world, taking medicine to new heights and giving our lives greater comfort. It puts the answers in our hands and hope in our hearts. Plastics make it possible. Nervous about foot odor and wetness? Get Odor Eater's foot powder and kick the problem. Odor Eater's powder gives protection on demand, even kicks out heavy duty odor and sweat. Now put Some folks call it a lawn, some call it a yard, but it's really more than that. It's a piece of your life with a life all its own. Sometimes a playground, sometimes a ball field, always a gathering place. So how do you care for a piece of land that will be in your family a long time with a piece of equipment that will also be there? Cub Cadet isn't like other tractors. It's better made and it's dependable and lasts for years. And right now it's more affordable than ever with 0% financing. Cub Cadet builds its tractors with welded steel frames and cast iron front axles. Most tractors feature the added performance of solid steel drive shafts. And we back them with a five year limited warranty. Call now to learn more about the complete line of Cub Cadets and for the name of a retailer near you. We'll also send you a free copy of the book, Big Ideas for Big Yards. And if you buy a tractor now, you'll get 0% financing until January 2004. Cub Cadet, engineered for people who know better. Searching ultimate power. Downloading Joe Sargent, Boston Bruins. Access the ultimate playoffs. The 2003 Stanley Cup playoffs on ESPN. Presented by Nextel. Beginning Wednesday, April 9th. Remember. Ted Williams is the John Wayne of sports. How perfect we can be. Nick Wish hit a tee shot that only gravity kept on this planet. Discover. It wasn't that Cal Ripken didn't get hurt. He was hurt all the time. How human we really are. There were times where I didn't think I was going to be able to walk again. These are their stories. I'm here to win. I believe I'm the best ambassador of baseball has. This is my house. This is the award-winning Sports Century. 8 p.m. weeknights on ESPN Classic. We're live at the Superdome, New Orleans, Louisiana, with Indiana leading UNLV, 88 to 80. You know, Billy, one story I want to mention before we get off the air, because it's a controversial one regarding Vegas. Lloyd Daniels, the young man that they've had some difficulty with out of the New York area recruiting. I got the feeling this year, and I told Jerry this to his face yesterday, I said, you know, Jerry, I thought you were turning it around with the public. They were beginning to sort of believe that you were running a real good program out there and then you got involved with a young man who has brought more discredit to the school he agrees but he's not going to back away from the young man he will never play for him at UNLV but he said he still wants to help him go to school a disadvantaged youngster but he made it quite clear yesterday that he will never play at Las Vegas so with 235 remaining Indiana leading 88 to 80 they have possession and Garrett Missing, but Thomas on the other side. The position rebounding. Banks hits another three. That is 35 points for Banks. He is 9 of 14 shooting threes. The double team offered CZ. Good spin dribble. Now that, people might Here's Hillman. Back court. It was not backcourt, obviously. Five. Yep. 
goes over. Now, what we see right now, Brent, is what happens to you. When you try to play a delay game and are not looking to score, the defense picks everybody up. Indiana can get an easy basket inside. Now, Banks, he and Gilliam have carried hand. Forces that one, but Gilliam cleans up. Scored and bring him to the line. We got a new game. It's 90-85 with Gilliam on the line. They have 35 of UNLV's points in this half. Thomas on the floor, shaking up here at the 150 mark. Here's Banks going in, double clutches it just to get it in the air was amazing. Now Gilliam comes down, he hits, and no foul should have been called on that because he's coming right down, he hit Thomas. And look at Gilliam's on the floor, he hit him with his elbow, might have hit him in a crazy bone a little bit. And you can see that he's holding his elbow. Poor Thomas, he's seen enough of Gilliam today. One, one in the chest, one in the face. Bob Knight goes back to three guards. Now he has Smart in the game, and watch and see if Smart doesn't break free with the with Hillman and Offord handling the ball out front and take it to the hoop. Banks with 35, Gilliam with 30. Long rebound, Garrett. on smart they might want to put him on the free throw line here's Hillman and now Hillman uses a timeout they had three remember two left 138 Indiana by five we'll be right back I have to focus gather everything I've learned all my successes all my sacrifices all my pain and concentrate that energy into one moment ah! that's a moment I'll use every single day of my life <gasps> there are 360,000 NCAA student athletes and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports look staff it's adorable Hi there. Hi, what kind is it? It's a mix, actually. Hmm. Part charcoal, part gas. Does it do any tricks? So yeah. Well, actually, it switches from gas to charcoal in just a few seconds. <clears throat> Listen, Steph and I are having a party tonight. Why don't you stop by? The Charbroil 2-in-1 Charcoal Gas Grill. It's man's new best friend. What a chick magnet. This is the latest. This isn't. This is the latest. This isn't. And when it comes to athlete's foot, this is the latest. This isn't. Lotrimin Ultra, the latest prescription strength medicine available without a prescription. Lotrimin Ultra, the latest advancement for relief of itching and burning. The latest cure, so ultra powerful, one use a day is all you need. Nothing's proven to be stronger or faster, and nothing's newer. Lotrimin Ultra, the killer cure. This is your classic big ticket to one of sports' greatest upsets. Jimmy V's Wolfpack hunts down Houston's Spy Slamma Gemma. Plus, Clyde Drexler and Derek Wittenberg go one-on-one -on -one 20 years later. Get your classic big ticket, 8 Eastern Sunday on ESPN Classic. The Bambino to the Bronx Zoo. You don't like it? You're fired. Mr. October to Mr. November. See ya. Salute the Pinstripes' 100th birthday with a marathon of classics. PM all this week, only on ESPN Classic. I'd taken three years of electronics courses in high school, but when I finished, I knew I really wanted a career in computers. A friend told me about ITT Tech. I spoke to a representative and signed up just two weeks after graduating. It was definitely the right thing to do. While attending ITT Tech, I was hired by a computer and technology consulting firm, and with the skills I picked up at ITT Tech, I believe I'll be able to adapt to new technologies and stay current as the future unfolds. I now work as a manager of information technology. My parents couldn't be prouder, they're happy that I'm taking my career to new heights. I'm really quite happy. Technology is the future, and that's where I want to be. We are educators helping people build a foundation for the rest of their lives. ITT Technical Institute, education for the future. Now you can take advantage of our three-day-a-week class schedule, which may better fit your busy lifestyle. Call 1-800-741-5121. That's 1-800-741-5121. Call today. Always there. 
And along with Billy Packer, I'm Brent Musburger. 138 left in regulation. It's a five-point game. Indiana over UNLV, 90 to 85 right now. Bob Knight just used a timeout. So the Hoosiers are down to two. Tarkanian is down to one timeout, the possession arrow, Indiana. And they really have to be careful on this inbound situation because you know UNLV is going for the steal. Knight elects to stick with the three guards. Hillman, Smart, and Alford. But I'll let you go back as far as you want. Kyle back in the ball game, trying to get a better ball handler in the game. Garrett goes out. Also, Garrett was hitting only 61% of his free throws in the tournament. They hit Smart. Get it back to Hillman. Kyle quickly. That's the one they do not want to put on the line. Now it's Smart. Hits Hillman. Elected to pull it out. And Smart for the layup. And it's a big one. It's a huge layup. 92-85, 119. That could do it for the Hoosiers. Banks. Go gets it back with a three, and they're not finished yet. He's made them from both corners now. Lead pass to Smart. Pretty soon they've got to put someone on the line. And there it is. Gilliam fouls Isle. So Steve Isle will be stepping up in a critical one-on-one -on -one situation. And one of the few guys for Indiana that's not an outstanding free throw shooter. Only shooting 68% on the year. And in the tournament, it's not even that good. It is 50%. Dean Garrett comes in for his rebounding. 102. What a great shooting performance by Freddie Banks here this afternoon. He has been unbelievable. Isle misses, and Vegas not finished yet with a minute to go. And Smart staying right with Freddie Banks. Gilliam. They double him. Here's Banks. Isle comes up on him. He misses that one. Gilliam contesting Garrett. Loose. And here's Patio looking three. Out. Rebound by Banks. Underneath. Over the back. Over the back. Oh, me! I thought it was Gilliam over the back. That's what it was. Exactly. <laughs> and I almost went through the ceiling there because it looked like they were pointing at Garrett. Take a look at it, Billy, and see if it's a good call. It is a good call. Right over the back. You see it right here. There's Gilliam coming right over Garrett's back. Garrett goes to the line. As you mentioned, not a good free throw shooter, but Indiana dodged a bullet here. 38 seconds and a four-point lead. Garrett at the line in this game is four of four. Missing, Callaway almost comes up with it. Rejected. He's going to take the three on a, on a break. But he tracks it down. He'll go back outside and Smart fouls him. That's his fifth foul. Smart fouls out of the game with 28 seconds, 92-88. That's a foul that Hillman does not make. And although Smart has been done a great job for Indiana this year, that was a mental mistake right there on his part, not a physical. You want to go ahead and just let Banks take it back outside, and you can see Bobby Knight say, I don't want the foul. You don't want to stop that clock, and now Vegas is going to have to foul. Indiana's struggles at the free throw line have left the running Rebels in this one. Now Garrett's in the ball game. I'm surprised Knight isn't taking him out, Brent. One and one, come on, one and one, no foul. Back shooting one and one. He missed the free throw. Indiana, Alford with possession. Can't foul him. He wanted to come up here to the free throw line. He took charge of business back there. Well, Kevin Houston of Army led the nation in free throw shooting this year. Each year it seems to get better and better. 
Houston shooting over 92%, but not a bad guy to have on the foul line if you want to seal up a game right here. Offered 9 of 11, shooting free throws today, 31 points. We've had three 30-point performances. There were a lot of people who tried to tell me that Bob Knight would never play this game in the 80s or the 90s. Yesterday, when he came into the building, he said, I don't want to slow it down. He said, I don't think we can. 94-88, 20 seconds. Of all people, Wade takes a three. Isle, with oh, a hand on the ball, has got it. And Hillman, Isle going to go all the way. That's it. Indiana is going to go to the finals. And Brent, let me give you a stat. They've been there four times, and they've never failed to win the national crown. The team that leads that is UCLA, 10 for 10. Great drive by Isle. And a man who enjoyed it more than anyone. Score it, and Bass Knight fouls out. Well, Brent, Vegas has lost twice this year, and we have done both games. Are we there, Jinx? I'm sure you just made us a lot of friends out in Las Vegas. But, folks, I had nothing to do. I didn't shoot it. I didn't handle a clock today or nothing. Jerry Tarkanian is denied for the second time going to the final game. Dude, uh, I think it bears repeating about that man right there. You give Knight one week to prepare for any team, and he's going to be real tough to beat. How about UNLV? <laughs> There is a former Knight assistant coach who now is very successful in his own right at Duke, Mike Krzyzewski. Of course, Mike at this time last year was very happy as his club had worked their way to the final game beating Kansas. Bobby eliminated him this year. He's got a lot coming back next year. Expect Duke to be uh, one of the teams on the scene. Not only an assistant under Bobby, but he played for Bobby. Well, the two teams who live by the three-point play all season long died by it here this afternoon. Providence eliminated earlier by Syracuse, 77-63. Vegas will fall, but they threw up 35. And there is Lois Tarkanian. The disappointment of traveling this far and then coming up a loser. They were the nation's number one team for more weeks than anybody else this entire season. Six seconds to kill with a six-point lead. How about the deployment here by Bobby Knight? Throwing the ball to half court and saying to Vegas, you can have it. Let's him have two tap-ins. And that one fell for two. Dick Paparo says that counts. Score that tap-in. The ball was up on the rim. And Knight, Tarkanian, shake hands at midcourt. Bobby Knight has done it. He'll be heading to the national championship game on Monday night, looking for his third national title. The Chevy MVPs in this game, Armand Gilliam for UNLV, 30 points and eight rebounds. And Steve Alford out of Newcastle, Indiana, 33 points as the Hoosiers advance on to take on Syracuse Monday night for the championship. Let's go back down to the courtside, Brenton Billy. All right, Jim, thank you. We're with Coach Knight and one of the young men who has traveled that journey to the championship, Dean Garrett. Dean, your thoughts about this victory? Hey, this is a great victory. Um, everybody thought we weren't going to win it. People were putting us down by three points and said Gillian was going to do this. There. UNLV was too fast for us, but hey, this shows you, you know, we're a strong team ourselves and we, you know, we're not quitters at all.
Bob, I thought you got an incredible game off the bench today. Two guys came in and really used their heads to set a lot of things up. Steve Isle and Hillman. Well, Hillman and Isle played very well for us in the regional and have played uh, very well for us uh, in a lot of situations all year. And, uh, that's what we recruited them for, to play very well for us. It was a thinking man's game in regard to substitution patterns and the way that you played. And you still understood it? I, I think I did, and I, and I thought you really did a super job taking advantage. When they went with a smaller club, let you stay with Hillman for a long time. Well, I, what happened? Uh, it, there had to be a lot of changes made. It was really a hot day, and I thought the UNLV kids were just absolutely plastered, their, their jerseys. Uh, I thought our kids did a heck of a job hanging in in the last 10 minutes. I thought we might just get worn down and be worn out in the last 10 minutes. All right. Gentlemen, congratulations. Good luck, Monday. To the team that, uh, to teams that were able to compete on all levels. When we started out with the AFL, 